you have a great prototype, but it needs to get to market. It needs to get to commercialization. It needs to get to users. And we have a real gap right now in social innovation of groups that will support that. So my plea is, particularly to funders, focus on proof of concept to commercialization. That valley of death, it needs to be supported. Without it, there is no impact at scale. Our innovations are products that empower people living on less than $4 a day. And we've chosen to work in medical devices. There's three things to know about the products we do. The first is that they're world class, meaning that they perform on par or better than the best products on the market. My second point, which is that they need to be market driven. So the products need to be affordable. And then the third thing to know about our product development is that they're user centric. And this means not just designing for the end user, but designing for everyone who is in that customer chain. That could be the purchasing decision maker and it could be the technician who repairs it. Our Brilliance project started when an Indian doctor approached one of my colleagues and said, you know, everyone's focused on the big ticket items in neonatal health, but there's low hanging fruit and there are babies that are literally dying. They don't have phototherapy, they don't have treatment for jaundice. Brilliance is phototherapy, and so that's just blue light to treat severely jaundiced babies. We licensed it to the largest maker of neonatal equipment in India named Phoenix Medical Systems. We fixed the price so that there's price transparency, very rare with medical devices, but we also said if you sell to public or rural hospitals, we will take less royalties. DREV also works in mobility, and another product we've designed is the Remotion Knee, which is a prosthetic knee for above-knee amputees. It's a four-bar mechanism that mimics the natural gait of how humans walk. We've worked with the Jiper Foot Clinic, and they have that first version of the knee, and it's been fit on over 6,000 amputees. We think about the entire product life cycle, so not just the design of the thing, but the problem we're trying to solve and how do we get to impact. It's about a four-step process. The first is identify, which is understanding what the problem is. And it's not just who the users are and what the markets are, but what is the price point? The second step is design. And design is what you traditionally think of with product development. It is brainstorming around what are the crazy far out ways we might be able to solve this problem. It's prototyping, it's iterating, it's talking to users to get to a final embodiment that will go to commercialization. The third step is deliver. And this is manufacturing, distribution, um, marketing, selling, if you're working in medical devices, it's also it could be regulatory. You need to be thinking about this delivery phase in that identify phase. You need to be thinking late stage as early as possible in your design process. And you wanna be able to measure the impact. Are you in fact solving the problem you set out to solve? Where possible, we design impact assessment into the products. So with Brilliance, the phototherapy device, it self tracks, so we actually know from the device, how much it's used, and from that num those numbers, we can calculate the number of babies treated by Brilliance units. We can estimate the number of babies treated by Brilliance who otherwise would not have received effective phototherapy. And from those numbers, we can estimate the numbers of deaths and disabilities averted. In using the private market to deliver our products, what that also means is that you need to design not just a very affordable product, but an affordable product that has profit margins built in. So that, for example, if DREV disappears tomorrow, the product will continue to be sold because the financial incentive structure is in place for that. One of the things we recognize very early on at DREV is that we can't do everything, particularly around delivery. We work with all kinds of partners. We work with NGOs, we work with for-profit companies, we work with faith-based organizations. What we're really looking for in our partnerships is who is the best entity to help us achieve our mission. And that means getting the products to our target users. We get a lot of questions of, how come you're working with a for-profit? Is DREV just using philanthropic funds to support a for-profit's work? We raise philanthropic money for our identifying design phase. So think about that as like product R&D. But once the product hits the market, it needs to be entirely economically self-sustaining. And we are structured like this because we think this is the best way to scale a product. And it also holds us accountable at the same time to making sure that we're actually designing a, a product that solves a problem. And when you have partners that are working together to bring a product to market, when everybody has skin in the game, that's how you solve the problem and that's how you get the products to impact.